Okay guys, this video is going to be uh, related to chapter 5 material and I have already gone into Connect Math and so at this point you should be done with chapters uh, 1 through 4 of course and I've already locked out I believe up to chapter 3. I'm going to lock out chapter 4 um, sometime tonight or tomorrow and so you should really just be focused on chapter 5 and chapter 6 at this point. So what we're going to do is I've deleted out two sections of uh, chapter uh, 5. So there's only two homeworks in chapter 5 and then in chapter 6 if I can find a couple of more things to cut out of chapter 6 then I will do that. Okay but for right now let's jump into the chapter 5 material and let me say that this was something that I kind of ended on with um, when we were in class which was function operations where you add, subtract, multiply and divide functions again function operations okay so the first thing we'll talk about very quickly is you know when you see this denotation here that means you're going to add the two functions together when you see the denotation of f minus g and again you can have your functions be any letters okay so we could literally apply the same thing to an h function a j function an s function if you see an f or you know a function and there's a solid filled in dot that means to multiply the two functions together so you get f of x times g of x and, and some of the time we like to use parentheses around those functions like that okay and the last one is if you see this denotation you're going to divide your two functions okay so we went over that in class so now let's just jump into some examples all right so let's say for a moment I have a function f and the notation is 3x minus 6 now let's say my g of x function is something like you know 2x minus 7 okay all right real simple so if we're adding these two functions together if they ask me you know what would be the answer to this then you would just go ahead and say take the f function plus the g function just like that and what you do is you just combine like terms right so we're gonna combine the 3x sorry with the 2x okay which would give us a 5x when we add those together and then you take the sign and the number like that and you get a negative 13 right so the answer to that uh, when you add f and g is 5x minus 13 now what happens when we want to subtract them so again this is the one I want everyone to pay very close attention to because we're going to write the f function but notice I'm going to put a subtraction symbol and then here's the g function inside the parentheses so it's really important on this one that you understand there's a negative one here so you have to distribute or multiply the negative one through that back function there okay so we'll drop the 3x minus 6 negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7 so again you'll notice that you have 3x minus 2x which is x okay, because 3 minus 2 is 1 and then you have that negative 6 plus 7 is a plus 1 okay so be very careful I cannot stress enough that there is a negative 1 in front of the parentheses you have to multiply it through that whatever however many terms are in that back function it changes the sign okay all right so now let's go to multiplying so if we are multiplying an f and g function okay then we're going to take the f function I'm going to put it in parentheses I'm multiplying it by the g function just like that so this is where we get into and I'm going to move up let's get into the FOIL method right first outer inner last okay so when I say I have to multiply remember we're doing multiplication so we are multiplying the first two terms together so it's this one and that one because it's the first two terms that are in the parentheses so 3x times 2x is 6x squared because 3 times 2 is 6 x times x is x squared from the law of exponents then we're now going to do the outer most two terms so the the two terms we're multiplying that are the furthest away from one another so that would be this guy 
and the furthest away would be this term here. So we're going to do 3x times negative 7, and we're going to get negative 21x. Okay, now I'm going to go and do my inner most two terms, the two that are closest to one another. We have to multiply those together, the inner, right? So the inner would be, you're going to see a lot of crazy colors for a second. So the innermost terms is that negative 6 and that 2x, which give me a negative 12x. And you're going to notice that always the outer and inner terms are always like terms, okay? So you always are going to combine those, all right? So basically we're going to eventually do 20, negative 21x minus 12. Okay, the L stands for the last two terms have to be multiplied together in the parentheses. And the last two terms, I'm just going to use some arrows, okay? But basically if I take, this is the last term in that parentheses, this is the last term in that parentheses, and in this case, you usually get constants in the back, right? So negative 6 times negative 7 is a positive 42, okay? Now another way to look at this, if that gets confusing with the FOIL, is I like to say, you know, everybody gets a turn. So one way that I've taught this to other students is, hey, this guy right here in the front, guess what he needs to do? He needs to multiply to every one in that back parentheses. That's his turn, right? So he has to multiply by those two guys in the other parentheses, and that's the first and outer. Then it's that negative six term, it's his turn, and he needs to multiply by these two guys, okay, in that second parentheses, and that gives the inner and last. So whether you want to remember the FOIL acronym, or if you want to draw your arrows where everyone gets a turn, so do that first guy times the other two, and then the last guy in that first parentheses times the other two, whatever makes you uh, remember uh, how to do that, okay? So here's 6x squared. We're going to combine that negative 21 and negative 12. Well, you're going to end up what? Adding them, because they're both negative. So this is going to be a negative 33x. And then there's no other person to combine with that 42. And that's the answer. There's nothing else to do to that. And the very last one is division. So if we do f over g, okay, so we're going to take the f function in the numerator. On the bottom, there's that 2x minus 7, okay, and that's it. There's nothing to simplify in this case. So again, that was, again, taking functions and dividing, multiplying, subtracting, and adding. All right, so let's do one more of those, and then I'll move on to composition. All right, here we go. So what if they give me a function where they say f of x is um, 3x minus 1, and my g function is something like 2x squared minus 4x plus 3, and then I have an h function. Remember, these letters are, you know, anything in the alphabet. So here, let's say they just tell me, hey, it's a 5x squared. All right, so we're just going to do different combinations of f, g, and h. So now what happens if they say, hey, add together f and h function. All right, so we're going to take the f function, which was 3x minus 1, adding to that the h of x function, which was 5x squared. Sorry, I didn't see the little 2 there. And as you can see, all three of these terms, one is an x squared term, one is an x term, and one is a constant. So there's no nothing that they can combine. They're not like terms. So you just write down what you have in the proper order. So put the 5x squared first, then the 3x, and the minus 1. That's that. Done. Now what if they tell us to add the h and g function? So let's just say we have h plus g with respect to x. So the h function is this plus, okay, and then we're going to go ahead and write the g function. Notice I don't use any parentheses because it's just addition and subtraction. Okay, I use parentheses for multiplication mainly, okay, and when I'm doing subtraction. All right, so now we're going to combine like terms. So guess what? Basically, these two guys need to combine together. So we basically get a 7x squared minus 4x plus 3. We're done. That's how simple this is. I hope no one misses this on the, um, you know, exam for finals, because they're pretty straightforward. Just take your time, combine like terms. Okay, now let's try the tricky one I told you about. So what happens if we want to do, just use the same example, what if they want us to subtract h and g? OK, 
Okay, so again, the h function is the 5x squared. Now notice, I'm going to put a minus, open parentheses, my g function was the 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. There we go. So, got the negative 1. We have to do the distributive property, which changes the sign. So I'm not going to mess with the 5x squared. Negative 1 times 2, negative 2x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4x. And negative 1 times 3, negative 3. That simple. And again, we still are going to combine those two x squared terms. Final answer, 5 minus 2 is a 3x squared plus 4x minus 3. Awesome. Okay? That's it. Just be careful with that subtraction. Now let's try multiplying. Let's multiply the f times g function. All right? So the f function, i got to kind of go back up because I forgot who he was. He was 3x put a parenthesis, 3x minus 1, and the g function, I believe, is that 2x squared minus 4x plus 3 is the g function. Let me just you scroll up for a second and check that out. Yep, got my signs right. All right, good deal. All right, did I see a plus? No, it's a minus 4x. I was just double checking. Sorry, guys. So this one, again, I just want to show the denotation that, you know, this was my f of x, times and then this right here is my g of x. It's a plug and chug. All right, so here we go. So this one's going to be interesting. Pay close attention to this one. Notice I haven't talked, uh, we haven't got into like names and stuff and vocabulary because for the sake of time, but this is called a binomial. Bi means two, okay? Like you bisect, you cut something in half into two pieces. So this is a binomial. Why? Because there's one term here one term there. So two terms are in that parentheses as a binomial. This one, if you notice, has one, two, three terms. So this one is called a trinomial. Trinomial, all right? So what's going to happen is, you know, the way that I showed up top about the FOIL method, let me just go back up to that for a second. Notice that these were two binomials. There was a 3x minus 6, there was a 2x minus 7. So there were you know, two terms in each parentheses, you use the FOIL method. But for this one, guys, because we have a trinomial and a binomial, we got to do a little bit more work. So I need you to pay very close attention to this one. Here we go. So first, you're going to do, I like that everyone gets a turn. So I'm going to take that 3x right here, this guy. He's going to multiply. Okay, and I'm going to erase that arrow so that's not in the way. He's going to multiply to all three of those terms. You see that? So 3x times 2x. 3 times 2 is a 6. x times x squared is an x cubed. You're going to add the 1 and the 2 on those powers. Then you're going to do 3x minus 4x, which is going to be negative 12x squared. 3x times 3 is a positive 9x. Bam. So we're done with that guy. Okay, very carefully, let me just go in. I'm going to erase these arrows for a second best that I can. Try not to cut anything off. Here we go. So now it's the other guy's turn, right? Okay, I'm using another color. So now it's negative one's turn to multiply by all three of the terms in this parentheses. You see that? That's simple. So negative one times uh, 2x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative one times negative four is a positive 4x. Negative one times a three, negative three. There it is. So now what we got to do is very carefully is put everything together that are like terms. So as you can see, this is my only cubic term because it's x to the third. But you see this guy here, the x squared and this x squared combined. That's a negative 14 x squared. Do not add those powers together. Do not subtract them. Don't do anything because you're doing, again, addition and subtraction. That's who they have in common. So you tack on the x squared, but you do follow the rule of integers. All right, now let's look at 9x and 4x. Well, we're going to add that together, and that's going to be 13x. And then there's no other constant term but the negative 3. That's it, okay? All right, so that takes care of that. And again, if I was doing division, just one of these, and then I'll stop there. If I was doing division of f and g, well, again, the f function is 3x minus 1. And then we got 2x squared minus 4x plus 3 at the bottom. 
And honestly, you know, I'm not going to get into factoring, so just leave that just like it is. You don't have to simplify. Just show that you know how to put f over g done. All right. So guys, that takes care of again. Uh, function operations again feel free to pause me go back play something if it's not clear and then please go on to the um, final review and try to do those problems and then on Tuesday I'll have some more problems assorted for the like like the final review and then we will um, take any of your questions on Tuesday all right now let's get into the last thing which is called function composition and then I'll end this video so function composition so the way that I like to think of that word, I hope everybody can still hear me, composition, is just like when you compose music, what are you doing? You're taking a collection of different sounds and different instruments and you're putting together one piece, right? It's making a masterpiece, right? So we're going to compose functions into one another. So what that means, this is the denotation. So if you ever see anything that looks like it's an open circle, okay, it looks like fog. You see that? Fog. What it's saying is, hey, take the G function, the person in the back, and plug him in to the F function. So what that looks like is like this. F is on the outside. G is plugged in on the inside where X is, where the X is. So again, remember what's inside the parentheses, right? Inside of the parentheses, when we show functions, our X is, right? So in, in terms of where the X is, you're going to plug the G function everywhere X is. Okay, it'll make sense once I do some problems, but I can't stress enough that we're plugging G into F. All right, that's what that means. Now, the opposite would be this one. What if I had GOF? G O F. Again, let me distinctify that that is not a solid dot like multiplication, it is a composition circle. So, again, that's an open circle like that. That's the denotation for composition. So, what does that mean? Well, that means I'm going to take the F function and plug it into G. So G is on the outside and the F of X function, whatever those terms are that represent F of X, plug it into G. And you plug it in everywhere that who is? The X is. All right, so here we go. Let's go into some examples. I'm just going to leave that up there. So what if my F of X function is 2X minus 3 and my G of X function is X plus 5? So notice if they ask me, Hey, do fog like that. Then what they're wanting me to do, and I'm going to use some colors now, is they're wanting me to take, again, G is going to go into F. So that means we're going to take the G function and we're going to plug it into F. Where are we going to plug it? We're going to plug it in wherever X is. Okay, we're plugging that into the F function where the X is. So that means I'm going to have two open parentheses, what goes in place of this x? That x plus 5. Close it, and then a minus 3 in the back. There it is. So again, we now have plugged the g function into the f function where the x is. And now we'll do the distributive property real quick. And what will we get? We'll get 2x plus 10 and then a minus 3. And to clean this up and simplify, we're going to do 2x and then remember 10 minus 3 is just 7. That's the answer. That will be the composed of G going into F. Very simple. Just take your time. Be very careful. All right, let's do the opposite. What if we have F plugging into G? We have the Gauss function. All right. Well, what we'll do here is we're going to do the opposite. So let me try to erase to show that representation. Erase this line here. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. All right. So now what we're going to do, change a different color, <clears throat> is I'm going to plug f into the g function. So that means we're going to take this entire expression of f, guys, and we're going to plug it in where? Where the x is into g. So now this is going to look like the following. Where the x is, okay, we're going to plug a 2x minus 3, and there was a plus 5 in the back. See that? All right, there's nothing to distribute. So basically that 2x minus 3 is going to fall out plus 5, and to clean this up, simplify it, it's 2x plus 2. Done. It's really that simple, right? So let's do, let me try to do two more examples of that. I don't want to make this video very long. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, we're going to get a little trickier, but it'll be okay. So what if they say, hey, f of x is x minus 5, g of x is x squared, 
and our h function is the root of x plus 2. And they want to the following. They want fog. Okay, so let's do this one. So what are we doing? We're plugging g inside of f. So basically I'm going to take that x squared and I'm going to plug it in right there. So I'm going to, it's going to look kind of interesting, right? So we're going to end up having an x squared minus 5. That's it. Everybody breathe. So again, I took the g function, which was this whole term there. I'm plugging it in to the x, and so x squared minus 5. You are done. There's nothing else to do. All right, now let's see what happens when you have f plugging into g. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to erase this. Try not to shave off. So for this one, we're going to do the opposite. Okay. So let's plug in this expression here into x right there. Okay. So that means we're going to do now, be careful with this one, because x minus 5 is the f of x, right? So I'm going to put a parenthesis because that's the x. So I'm going to say inside of x right here, plug in the x minus 5 close it and then square it. You see that? Be careful on that one. Slow it down and replay it if you need to. So now this one's interesting because basically this is the following. This is my base and this is my power, right? So basically I have two of these. I have two x minus fives being multiplied out. And then look, it's two binomials. We do the FOIL method. So I'm going to do FOIL. I'm going to do the first two. x times x is x squared x times negative 5 is negative 5x. I'm going to do my innermost 2, negative 5x, and my last, positive 25. So the answer to this one is x squared minus 10x plus 25. All right, and let me do one more. All right. So now the next one they ask for is they say, hey, do half. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to plug the f function into the h. Well, the first thing I notice is, look at the h function, guys. Let me get some colors. So my f function is this one. And I want to plug this in to the h function where the x is. So very carefully, what I want to do is do the square root. For the h, we're going to put x minus 5, close it, and then look, there was also a plus 2 under that square root, okay? And so basically all that happens to this is leave that square root. There's nothing in front of that parentheses, so we're going to just fall out x minus 5 plus 2. We're going to combine these two like terms, so the answer is x negative 5 plus 2 negative 3. That's it. That's all we can do for that. All right, so that takes care of composition. So I hope everybody understands that. The only thing I'm going to show now very quickly, I'm sorry to get this done in one or two minutes, is what if they give you a value? So what if we tried the same problems, okay, again, and I do some values. So let's just go back and let's stare at a couple of these. So look at this last one that I just asked for, this half, okay? But what if they say, hey, with respect to x being 3, so plug f into h, and we did that. We plugged f into h, we got this. Now see that? But they said, hey, but let x, because of this part right here, let x equal 3. So what, what happens is we say, okay, square root again, and then the x is a 3 minus 3, which is 0, so then we got the square root of 0, which is what, guys? 0. That's it. So basically you do the function plugging in, the composing, and then plug in the x value. Let's do another one. What if they say to us, um, do Goff with respect to negative 2? So let's see what that is. So we're going to go up here, find the Goff answer, which was all this right here. So I'm going to write that down. It was, I believe, x squared minus 10x plus 25. But again, they said, let x be negative 2. So we come back and we say, okay, because of this right here, x 
was negative 2 because remember every time above right I'll just show you we were talking about things being with respect to X you see but now the X has a value alright so now let's plug this in very carefully so we do open parentheses plug in a negative 2 there don't forget to square it we have a negative 10 remember this is multiplication so we open parentheses negative 2 there plus 25 so very carefully we say hey what is negative 2 times negative 2 well that's a positive 4 what is negative 10 times negative 2 well that's a positive 20 and then add 25 so our grand total here is we add this up you know 24 plus 25 we're gonna get 49 and that would be the value all right so this is this video it was again over function operations it would also uh, we talked about function compositions and then evaluating function compositions and we can do the same thing even for function operations if they gave us a value for X we would just do our adding subtracting multiplying or dividing and then plug in our value for X okay so you should now be able to do section 5.2 homework in connect math get that done definitely by Tuesday and then I'm gonna shoot the next video alright guys see you later